So it's the, well, it's the afternoon now on the second day. Had a little sleep in this morning to catch up on my sleep and did a little bit of hardware shopping. Um, back up at the sugar bush and today we're cutting bricks um, to brick that evaporator. So I came up, I got a fire started so that we can heat up some lunch and the kids can cook hot dogs and marshmallows. Uh, ran up here on the snow dog again which is a great little machine so that's made it really easy to haul stuff up here you just uh, stand in the sled and I brought up about uh, 24 24 or 26 of those fire bricks they weigh six and a half pounds each so that's over 120 pounds of bricks plus my 165 pounds and that machine had no trouble hauling us up there and even more interestingly than that is the strength of this plastic and these little retaining pins that hold the hitch on there doesn't seem to be any stress on that so it says something about the strength of these pelican sleds as well so that was pretty cool and where we're at now i have some more of the insulation board to cut and fit going around uh, on the inside of the evaporator so we're looking in the front door here now and you can see I started to dry lay some of these bricks and I'm going to dry lay them uh, to make sure they all fit I'm gonna have to cut some angles and things on them and then uh, once I've got them all dry laid and sized we can start to parge them or cement them so I've got this uh, cementing mix that came from Dominion and Grimm, super high mall, and uh, I think it probably has to warm up a bit. So I'm either gonna have to wait for warmer weather to do that, or I'll have to warm it up by the fire. So I'm just marking my bricks with a Sharpie marker. I'm gonna cut on, uh, just use my sled as a base. And I picked up one of these uh, diamond blades for my uh, portable grinder. So this is my Makita set, the 18 volt lithium ion, three amp batteries. And I've already been using these batteries a bit for uh, topping trees and cutting wood. So I don't know how long they'll last, but I'll probably get through a bunch of cuts and then I'll have to charge them up again and do some more, more cutting. Supposed to be for after supper. Yep, for dessert. Yeah. So you're taking we a long time. Hey, is that a brick? That's a brick, and I just was cutting it up so it fits in its spot. Yeah. So, I got this much done before I had to uh, stop just because the cordless batteries died. They've been up here for a few days in the cold and I've done other work with them. Um, so this is where I'm at until I charge them up. So in the meantime, we're cutting firewood, we're boiling sap. Look at that. This is a 24 liter I think cauldron, it's that big, yeah. and I'll link it below. It's from Bristow Ironworks, which is uh, one of your only sources for new craft-made cast iron in Ontario, Canada. And while we're getting our new school evaporator set up, we're doing a little bit of old school boiling. 
so that's going and we've also been giving the snow dog a good run cutting up some firewood so the wet firewood is getting aside for next year so that'll get split and dried and all the dry stuff we're heaping up over there for bonfires and supplementary wood and we're pretty much able to fill this with firewood stand on top put a couple pieces on the deck there and drive it around and if you're careful it works really good a bit trickier on the hills a bit tricky on the corners but um, works a lot better than hand bombing it <laughs> all right back up here working it's day 101 of my big wild year i have the two sides cut and I mortared them in place and I'm going to do a finishing coat uh, on the inside after I get everything finished. Uh, so now I'm working on this bottom row of bricks coming up the slope and I started with a full brick and as I mentioned um, they say it's kind of critical to cut the angle or the edge off of the brick so that when you want to lift your little fire uh, grill out that I don't hit the bricks so i haven't cut the angles off of these two yet i'll do that before i mortar them in place and i'm just measuring still this has been an invaluable tool so you're able to uh, figure out what the angle is from your brick to the side you can um, screw that down so it doesn't move and then i'm using that tool to mark the bricks so um, the edges are on an angle, so I'm going to mark this brick here so that it sits flush against the side and I'm going to work my way up and then I'll check back in after this is laid and I'll show you what I'm doing on the top side. Okay, so those are all dry laid now and what I'll do is I'll take them all out put them on a piece of plywood in their same order and then I'm going to start to cement them into place starting at the bottom Right there it is all laid and grow or cemented and then I did all the surface so all the little gaps are mostly filled and I'll go over it again. <clears throat>
all the way up to the top there. So now what I want to do is finish cutting my pieces for the inside and brick across the top, down, over, fill the sides in and it should be ready then to do the pans. Well, that was kind of fortunate. I was just uh, coming back from the sugar bush. I was doing some work up there bricking my uh, Dominion and Grim evaporator. You can see it's very warm out and the snow is uh, sublimating, I guess. So it's very, very misty. And I saw a hair right on the edge of the field here. And I happened to be bringing my Ed Gun Leshy. So I see a hair probably one in every eight or ten trips up here. So I started to uh, carry the Ed Gun Leshy with me every time I come up because it's super portable. And there is a hair. So that might be Easter dinner, actually. Uh, for the big wild year, it is day 101. So we've been doing really well. Um, the freezers are starting to empty up a bit. So it's nice to um, get a uh, get a little bit of extra meat because we're kind of in between winter fishing and summer fishing. We haven't made uh, much maple syrup yet because our boiler is not quite set up. Um, so I'm carrying the uh, leshy around with me pretty much everywhere I go, just in case, uh, just in case a chance like this. And today it panned out. I'm back up with fresh batteries. It's another day now, and it's bricked, bricked all the way to the back. So I want to go over all the gaps now. And do my finish coat so you can see I already did it on the arch here. It looks real nice So I want to make sure that my sides look as good as the arch by doing a skim coat and One important thing to remember is that when you're under the flue here or the chimney uh, You do not want to brick those bricks. So if water comes in your chimney, you want it to go through the cracks and then if you look underneath There are a couple of uh, drain holes along the bottom here. So you want any water that's in there to drain out. So we're getting pretty close here. So while my mortar is setting, I'm going to put some of these other pieces together. So all these stainless steel rods just pushing through. There's my uh, draft door. Just my right side. just uh, there's a little bump on this door catch here so when you push it it hits but you can lift it on and then it sits flat against there left side door Thing. It bumps up on there, but I've got a bit of ice on it right now, so it doesn't want to fit quite right. You can see some of my paper got stuck. There we go. Starting to look like a real deal here. Okay, this is the latch for the draft door. So it's just got a bolt and a nut. Go through here. Okay. 
beautiful sunshiny day today. Okay, so that lets you... I wonder if I got it upside down. Should be able to catch on something. Yeah, I definitely got it upside down. Let's see you catch it to hold the draft open. <clears throat> see, there's just a little step here and here. So you put it like this, and then it'll catch on the bottom of the frame there. gloves on. Be a lot easier without them. There, one setting. And the big open setting. Or closed. So there's the draft. Look at that. So this dirt this part started to go really quick because Rob came by. He's just over there by the fire. Where are you? Oh, hey. Hey, Eric. And he helped me to lift on. This is the sop pan at the back, syrup pan at the front. And then there's the cute little cook surface here so we can cook some big wild food. There's the transfer box. So we hook that up. Nothing's level yet, but we hook that up. And this is the float box for your uh, for your inlet. So when this level gets down too low, you can automatically add, add more. So I'm just getting all the little plumbing pieces. Oh, and who's this? You want to be on camera? Hey, you want to be on camera? Oh, you just made the video. This is like going into my freezer packages of meat over here. Uh, this is all the plumbing parts, so I'm just unwrapping those and getting them figured out. So it's, uh, we're getting close. Looks like my mortar is setting nicely in there. It's gonna be good. Minuta Grim. My only catch is that there are not ash pan so I'm gonna have to rig something under here because I put mine on wooden beams temporarily so I got to figure out something underneath to catch all the hot ashes so I don't burn my beams okay this part's a little bit different than what's in the English PDF manual they show a twist top valve here um, but there's actually this interesting um, transfer switch that up here um, so that's pretty cool so once that's in it spaces this float box the right distance off that this elbow connector fits perfectly so that's your transfer for bringing your sap over to your syrup pans and now uh, it's just about set up I just have to figure out what to do with this valve here and there's a level indicator so that's pretty cool too and it's almost set up and ready to rock so a couple of last things i'm still not quite sure about this but it uh, does fit in where the syrup comes in and this is the splash guard so it just slides on at the front of this syrup pan here and keep sap from splashing into the syrup, I guess. Float valve is set up. I did put in this uh, joint here, so this is your sap level indicator. And I tightened up this drain on the back. Put on the first piece of chimney. So when we boil, we'll have to pull the tarp back a bit. Um, but that's there. And the last thing that I need to do is to level it. 
So I brought a big wrench and I'll uh, level these legs at the back. Got a few hours before work here. It's uh, day 107, I think. So I wanted to come up and fire up this evaporator for its first run and try and burn off, or evaporate, not burn off, but evaporate a couple hundred liters of sap because I think it's going to be a really sappy day today. Sunny, 10 degrees. Um, and uh, my storage barrels are full. So this guy's supposed to have 200 liters of sap to start a boil. And I've got probably 300 liters of sap stored up right now. And I'm gonna start to transfer it over. And once it's in the pan, I'm gonna fire it up. So I'm pretty excited for the first boil of the season and that 300 liters of sap should boil down to uh, probably uh, eight, seven or eight liters of syrup, I think, based on our kitchen boils that we've done so far this year. So I just wanted to get my paper in here before it gets damp on the snow. Then it'll just be all ready to light up. Got that stack of firewood that we put aside in the fall and Delphine dug it out so the sun's been on it and it should all be nice and dry. I'll throw some other dry kindling in there shortly but let's go deal with the sap first. Water froze on the lid. So that big barrel behind me, the orange one, is that in the frame? It's uh, 209 liters, I think. This one is 60. And we've just been pouring directly into these. So what I need to do now is to get uh, my filter. We have to filter this into a bucket. So I'll grab an empty one, set up the filter, pour into it, and then I can just put clean sap in the evaporator. Everything froze up last night. It's minus five degrees Celsius here today. I'll show you my filter. So I've got one of these felt filters from uh, Atkinson Maple Syrup Supply. It's in the shade, it's in the sun. So I just need two sticks maybe to uh, hold that in place, or maybe I could just pour straight into it. Here's another almost 20 liters of sap from yesterday when we were collecting. Hey, why are you drinking my sap? 
Now there's dog slobber. Nobody wants to see that. Oh, slushy on the bottom. You're taking up all the screen there, dog face. Hey, get out of there. I'm licking the camera screen. Gross. All right, I'm gonna take this over to the evaporator. So all the, uh, the valves and the sap float box and the intake are on this side. So one thing I need to do is move most of my gear that has gotten into somewhat of a disarray. I have a little bit of leftover cement from the bucking. Got my little splitting axe up here. A generator that I didn't use yet because I did everything with my cordless, what have I got, Makita, 18 volt lithium ion, which is a really handy set. <clears throat> Done a lot of work with that, built my bear stand. Done some renos. Cut a bunch of wood. Roofed my dad's shed. Okay, now we got a little bit of workspace here. These, I haven't been drinking up here. These are empties that I've saved up because I really like these swing top lids. And I think we're going to, here I am. I think we're going to uh, put a lot of our syrup into these bottles. Because I think I've got about 30 of them. Alright, so this is the float box. There's a, an inlet here, so you can pipe your sap in, and then it's automatically going to fill to a certain level, which you can set, just like your toilet tank. It's got a, it's got a little level. So if I pour into this, and then it should go through into the main tank, and then I'll be able to see if I've left any of my uh, any of my valves open, because they'll start leaking out. There's the float box there. And there's my sap pan with the raised flue. So the sap goes in between all these channels and from the underside it looks similar but the heat from the fire is coming up into these channels. So you're greatly increasing the surface area that makes contact with your sap and uh, it really helps you to boil it off. So I'm gonna get probably another five more buckets in there. We're gonna fire it up. Well, it took about an hour to get it warmed up, but uh, it's out of boil now. Syrup pan's going. The sap pan is going. Got enough clearance on my tarp that nothing's gonna burn. And I would like to boil maybe a hundred liters off, because I can only stay for another hour and a half. Maybe I could boil off more than that. So I'm gonna keep keep topping it up, and then I'll damp the fire rate down when I have to go and 
I'll come back probably this evening and pick up where I left off. Probably be here in the dark, so there's a good chance that I'm going to bring a new flashlight out with me. I'll do a little flashlight review as well. Trainer, but I don't know if it'll fit there. Like a spaghetti strainer. Get the foam out. Oh yeah. That works good. Look at all that foam. Hey, quit drinking my sock. Where are we going to hang this up? Same spot, maybe. to collect. I guess I could give you the little tour here because um, last time I did a tour around there was way more snow and there is still a lot of snow if you look around at how much snow there is and you don't really know until you break through you're like oh yeah there's a lot of snow up here still. So there's the evaporator, Benita Grimm 2x6, and it's got the sop pan at the back, it's got the syrup pan at the front, and they shipped me the model that has a cook plate at the front. So here, I've just got a little pot boiling, uh, well coming to a boil, so I can calibrate the thermometer. And on the side here, there's a float box for your inlet sop that goes to the sap pan boils in there and then on the other side there's the transfer box and the transfer box brings your heated sap over into your syrup pan and then in the syrup pan the sap travels 
through the channels and finishes on this very front panel. And the thermometer that I need to calibrate goes in this hole here. And once it reaches a certain temperature, which is about seven degrees above boiling, then you can open this up and take off a little bit of your sap until the thermometer says you're getting to the cooler sap. So apparently the sap is in a gradient. Your hotter sap is at the front here and channelizes uh, as it goes back. It's getting cooler and cooler and cooler until it's at the coolest in the uh, float box. But you can see even my float box is evaporating a little bit. And then when I'm properly set up, I will have this inlet will go to my storage tank and the float box will automatically control the entry of sap so uh, I don't have to do it by buckets by hand. It'll be a little more controlled. So I'm starting to accumulate some junk up here, shipping crates, extra buckets, my tools, so that is some stuff that I need to get under control. My chainsaw is up here because we'll have to cut some more firewood for probably for this season but also to stock ahead for next season. We've been uh, cooking and evaporating here a little more old school so I don't know the last time you saw this pit was maybe when we cooked the porcupine and there was just a little hole in the snow. Now it's about eight feet across so we've melted a lot of snow here. And for sap storage, we have this little 60 liter barrel, which will double up for a lot of camping trips. And we recently picked up this 200 liter barrel. Uh, so they're both full right now. And my three buckets there are, uh, two of them are full. One is empty. And my other bucket over at the back there, that's the sap that I'm going to pour into the evaporator soon. And I pour it in based on the depth of the sap. So there's a depth meter here and it's bouncing around quite a bit because uh, there's a real good boil going on right now. But the levels also come down and it's time for me to add more sap. You can see my reflection. There's me and my camera. Look at that shiny stainless steel. Make it a grim. I guess we'd have a look at this chimney too. The flue, it's a wide base flue and then it tapers off. I have two other sections of uh, pipe but I've only got the one on right now because that's all I need really to uh, get the smoke and the heat out of my tarp shelter which I bushcrafted in an earlier video. It's all lashed up, bungee cords, fancy knots, the whole works. So I've been uh, Collecting sap by the light of the moon, which is interesting. I've never done that before, but uh, I just wanted to make sure that I got as much of it as I could. There are still a few buckets that I did not collect from today, but I figure that I have hauled 320 liters. My nose is bad again. Can you tell? Um, my polyps came back, so I'm not quite sure what caused that. Because I didn't really do anything too, too much different in my diet. I've been eating the same stuff for three months. Um, but I'm leaning towards seasonal allergies. Oop, checking my footing here. And uh, so it's pretty dark. But I want to boil some more before I go home. Have a late supper. And fall fast asleep. But that's pretty much a wrap for today. I'll give you a shot of the moon there to... Uh, close this segment and uh, I'll be back.